Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to start a, a bunch of videos on uh, AC motors. Okay guys, and we're still in unit uh, five. We're in handout two. It's actually a pretty big handout. Okay. And there's a lot going on in it. And so we're going to spend like a multiple videos uh, looking at unit five handout two. There will be some homework associated with it at some point, but we're not really ready to do it yet. So you might have to watch a bunch of videos and then at some point I'm going to, you know, start assigning some homework and it, you know, might be kind of at the end. Okay, guys. So you'll notice right in the middle of this unit here, there's a section called single phase AC motors. And it's on page three and it starts talking about single phase induction motors and it gets right into resistance start induction run motors and you know the parts and we're going to talk about all that okay but before we talk about that i want to talk about you know what is an induction motor okay an ac induction motor because it doesn't matter if it's single phase or if it's resistance start or capacitor start or <clears throat> you know all the other categories that AC induction motors fall into it doesn't matter you know I mean they all have their own little details and you know good things and bad things about them but they all basically work in the exact same way and that is and you probably know this okay because you've been taking electronics and all that kind of stuff but the way all induction AC induction motors work is they all work on the principle that there is a rotating magnetic field Okay, and when I say rotating magnetic field, let's forget about this book for a second, okay? When I say rotating magnetic field, it's a little bit hard to visualize, and so we're going to draw an AC motor here, guys, an AC induction motor, because they all work the same way, and so we'll start with a simple one here. We're going to just put a couple of poles here, and these poles are going to be wound, okay? And so they're wound like this. And then they come out here, and then they're connected to, you know, uh, an AC source, okay? And when I fire up this AC source, because alternating current looks like this, guys, okay, what I end up with is a alternating magnetic field here where this is north for a time and then it becomes south for a time and then it becomes north for a time and then it becomes south for a time and so you know that's an alternating magnetic field in there now you might say well that's alternating it's not rotating but if you squint okay you can consider that to be a rotating magnetic field because if it's north here and then it becomes north here and then it becomes north here and then it becomes north here it doesn't take much imagination to notice that you could say it's north here and then it's north here and then it's north here and then it's north here. Now this isn't actually rotating, it's alternating. And that is a major problem for single phase machines and that is why single phase induction motors require a start winding, okay? And we'll talk about the start winding eventually, okay? But for now I want you to believe me when I say that that AC, you know, alternating AC north south, you know, magnetic pole thing going on there is actually rotating because once you understand that or believe that, you know, you can understand, you know, what kind of going on in here. Now, inside that rotating magnetic field, they put, you know, what's known as a rotor, right? And a rotor on an AC induction motor, and by the way, guys, AC induction motors, guys, they go by a bunch of different names, okay? And so I don't want you to be confused because I'm going to call it an induction motor. I'm going to call it a squirrel cage motor. I'm going to call it a split phase motor. I'm just going to call it a single phase AC motor, okay? They're all the same, okay? They're the same machine. Don't be confused. They're not different, okay? They just have a lot of different names, okay? But they all work basically the same way. So... You know, the rotor of the machine is sitting in there, and it doesn't have any windings, you know, per se. Um, it's just basically a big old chunk of metal and a shaft through the middle with, you know, some bearings ho hopefully holding it. And then they impregnate, you know, aluminum, usually aluminum. It says copper in your book, guys. But really close to the surface here, they kind of impregnate a bunch of aluminum bars that go all the way through. And there's a picture of it here, okay? So I'm just going to show it to you. It's right in your book, okay? This is on page four. 
There's the rotor, okay? And it's a big old steel lamination thing. The reason it's laminated, guys, is because um, that reduces eddy currents and stuff like that. And so you won't, you know, you'll notice that it's a whole bunch of thin layers of steel in there. And uh, here you can faintly see, you know, the the uh, aluminum bars that are impregnated in there. And I also want you to notice that the aluminum bars are shorted on either end by these aluminum rings, okay? And that's sort of cast into this thing. Now that thing sits in there. And, um, you know, once you turn this thing on, in other words, you're connecting the AC to the stator, which is the portion of the machine that doesn't turn. This is the rotor. It does turn. That rotating magnetic field, you know, the rotation of the magnetic flux is actually crossing through those aluminum bars, okay? And anytime you have magnetic flux crossing through aluminum bars, you are going to get of voltage induced into those bars, okay? Now those bars are shorted out by the aluminum rings that are on the ends. And so even if there's just a small amount of voltage induced into those bars, guys, that small amount of voltage is gonna cause a significant amount of current flowing through those bars, okay? And when you have current through, flowing through a conductor, guys, you get a magnetic field around those conductors. And so as soon as I turn this thing on, guys, I have that rotating magnetic field, it induces a bunch of current in those bars, which produces a bunch of magnetic flux around those bars. And pretty soon, this rotor will want to start to, you know, rotate together with the magnetic field. Okay, guys? And the speed at which this, you know, magnetic field is rotating. Okay, this is not physically rotating. Okay, guys? It's just the magnetic flux that's rotating. But the speed at which that you know, magnetic field rotates around in this machine is called the sink speed, right guys? And you've been learning about it in electronics, I'm sure. Okay, it is the same formula that we learned a little while ago when it came to, you know, calculating the frequency, except for it's transposed. You guys already know that I can calculate the sync speed of any AC machine. It is the frequency times the 120 over the number of poles, okay? Where F is frequency, it's the same formula, okay? And P is uh, number of poles. You know, and it's pretty important to uh, specify that it's the number of poles per phase, okay? And uh, N, we forgot, you know, is uh, RPM, speed in RPM, right? What that allows us to do, and we're going to calculate in a second, okay, guys? But what that allows us to do is calculate how fast this rotating magnetic field is. And that will allow us to figure out roughly how fast this rotor is going to turn. Now, it's important to understand that an AC induction motor rotor will not turn at the sink speed. It will slip, right guys? You know that already. It will slip because um, all AC motors do. Okay, now why do they slip, Van Andel? Well, because if you think about it, if they weren't slipping, if this rotor was running at the same speed as the sink speed, then there would be no flux crossing the, you know, bars. And if there's no flux crossing the bars, there's no voltage induced into those bars. And if there's no voltage induced into those bars, then there's no, you know, magnetic field around those bars. So this machine can never run at sync speed. It will always slow down. Now, how slow will it go? Well, as you put a load on an AC motor, the first thing it's going to do is slow down. If it slows down, we get more field flux crossing these bars, causing more current to flow in them, causing a stronger magnetic field, causing more ability for this machine to produce torque. All right, guys. Now, what was I going to say here? I can't even remember right now. So this thing will always run slightly less than sync speed, okay? And, you know, students get all messed up about this, okay, guys, because they're uh, trying to figure out what's going on with the motor. And uh, really, there's only 
a couple of different variations for AC motors. Okay, guys? There are basically two, maybe three. The first is a two-pole motor. Okay? Now, if I calculate... This is this is, looks like a two-pole motor, right, guys? If I calculate the speed of a two-pole motor, the sink speed at least, let's do it here for a second. N is equal to going to be equal to, let's say, at 60 hertz, okay? And we're going to, you know, we're going to assume 60 hertz because that's what the frequency is in North America, right? Unless I have a VFD and then everything's out the window. But let's go with 60 hertz, okay? So 60 times 120 over 2. And if I calculate that, I'm going to find out that the RPM is 3,600. Okay, so let's do that here for a second. Thirty six hundred RPM. So let's go like this. Type one two pole. Okay. Here's another very common type. That's four pole. And if I calculate the sync speed for a four pole, it's going to be the same formula. N is equal to sixty times one twenty over 4, and when I calculate that, we're going to find out that it's 1,800. 60 times 120 equals, divided by 4, 1,800 RPM. Basically, in North America, you're going to find two different kinds of motors. Okay? Two-pole and four-pole. Now, if you look at the nameplate on those two machines, you will not see 3600 and 1800. What you'll see is something like this, 3525 on the nameplate, or 1750. Okay, And that's because the nameplate is going to actually show the speed of the motor running at full load, which means it's going to be slipping, and it's going to be slipping looks like about 75 RPM or 50 RPM for this particular one, guys. And so, you know, if you see a motor that's, you know, close to 3,600 RPM, you're going to know it's a four-pole. And if you see a motor that runs at 1,750, you're going to know it's a two-pole. And 99% of all motors that you're going to find out there, guys, are going to fall into one of these two categories. Once in a while, you're going to see a six-pole and I have seen some, okay, but they're pretty rare, okay, and if you actually calculate that, you're going to find out that it's 1200 RPM is the sync speed, RPM, okay, and on the nameplate, it's going to say something like 11, I don't know, 20, or something like that, okay, because it's going to be just under 20, and this is, this guy's rare, okay, guys, but basically, don't sweat it. You're going to see these two motors out of there, out there most of the time. Once in a while, you're going to see the six pole. Very rare. I've seen them in industry, industry, and usually they're older. Okay, guys. But uh, we're going to talk about current and why an AC motor draws more current when it's under more load in the next video. So come back for that. Okay, guys.